unboxing the XC104 uh, four position trimmer rack by Green Touch. This is the Extreme Pro Series. I'm going to unbox it, um, look at all the parts, and then we're going to go through the assembly and finally mounting it up in the trailer. These are the instructions, but it's a full color print of the step-by-step -step instructions for enclosed and open trailers both. So that's, uh, that's pretty sweet. I like that. And also, this is adhesive backed. The instructions are. So you peel the, you peel the backing off. And you can actually stick this, these instructions up on the wall or wherever you want them. Um, I'm actually probably going to stick this on the box, on the back side of the box. And I can just have the box leaning against the wall and uh, move the instructions around as I need them. But I think that's pretty slick, so I want to show you guys that. On top, we have the uh, arms. These are the going to be the motor support arms. You see they're solid, they're aluminum, they're, they're still very light, but being solid, very strong. So, get all those pulled off. these I believe those are also part of the the engine motor mount support system okay and also we have the instructions for the motor mount themselves. So, oh, sorry, engine support kit assembly. Um, so that's the instructions for that. And then the four, and these are all wrapped, but the four engine supports, which they'll actually go like that underneath the engine. So. Very nice quality, guys. Um, it's hard in videos to do things justice sometimes with the uh, quality of how things are made and the thickness. You know, sometimes dimensions are kind of lost in video, but, um, but you know, these are nice, beefy components. I like it. We also have four separate bags of fasteners. It looks like each bag is the same fasteners, they just have them separated. So um, those are probably, my guess, will be the engine mount, but we'll find out, um, or the engine supports. But those are all four of the same hardware, it looks like, just individually packaged.
to the two main support bars. Very well built. I'll set those over here to the side. Okay. And here's the other one. smaller components in here so you have these brackets uh, which I believe are going to be the wall mount brackets again we'll go over all of this individually don't know what these are yet Another bag of mounting hardware. I see some self-tapping screws. Um, there's an Allen wrench in there, some Allen bolts, and some uh, pan head bolts. Okay. These, I believe, are going to be the uh, mounting blocks that actually go on the trimmer. I believe so we'll uh, make sure of that here in a, here in a bit but it's four of those okay and then I believe these are the other four that will go on each individual trimmer so they're uh, they're beefy but they're not heavy you know it's this is all um, everything is aluminum so far I think except for the mounting brackets and the actual uh, items that are painted green that are the uprights so nice okay and we have Six bolts and nuts, uh, vinyl lock nuts. Okay. And I believe this is going to be the last of it. The uh, aluminum arms. I think those are part of the. Uh, engine support system so all right guys we're all unboxed let's uh start on assembly uh, i'm going to start with step number one i have the racks laid out the way that i'm going to be putting them on the wall with the locking rack or the rocking locking support to the right side and the uh, trimmer head end support on the left side that's how it's going to go on the wall that's just so I can kind of keep that straight. Uh, keep in mind that the mounting assembly method and mounting method that I'm using is for an enclosed trailer. So if you're using an open trailer to install these, uh, these instructions may not be the same. They will not be the same and they won't help you. So uh, I'm going to start with step number one, assembling the uh, mounting brackets. So, these are your mounting brackets, guys. And then, along with these, you have the 90 degree plates, which are these, okay? So that's what we're gonna be putting together first. So it's gonna be the larger bag of mounting hardware that has the, uh, the bolts in it that have the Allen wrench head. So it's gonna be that package that has the Allen wrench in it. So 
what you're going to have are these Allen head bolts and then lock nuts that go on them. And what you're going to do, according to the directions, instructions, you're going to put the short end, so you have a long end and a short end. You're going to put the short end on top of your bracket. There's no, there's no top or bottom, but you're going to put it on the top side. And then you're going to run your bolts through from the bracket side, the 90 degree bracket. You'll run all three through like so. And then put your nuts on. Okay guys, so here's what you end up with. This is one of the bottom brackets, but uh, all four brackets will be the same, okay? That's, that's what you're going to have with all four. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the camera off while I, while I assemble all four of those, and that way they'll all four be ready. But like I said, that's what you end up with. So what you're looking for and all I used I'm not sure what size that nut was it wasn't quite a 3 8 so it's a metric size um, but I used a pair of channel locks and the allen wrench that comes with it I just held the nut in place with the channel locks and went on quick and easy so uh, that's what you're gonna have like I said I'll go ahead and get the other four put together okay guys as you can see, I have all four of the brackets assembled. So the next step is finding the position that you want on the wall. So let's turn the camera around to the wall and I'll show you how to go about that. Okay guys, so everyone's setup is going to be a little bit different. Um, what you want, what you need it may not be the exact same as mine. So I'm gonna show you how I determined the position for myself, for what's gonna work best for me. Uh, my main objective is to have as much clearance at the floor as I can, because that's where your mower deck is at. If you have attachments on your mowers, things like that, uh, the height of your tires, all of that stuff comes into play, and I wanna have as much clearance at the floor, so between the floor and the rack, as I can. So for height, I you're, you're supposed to hold up the mounting bar, which is the one that has the locks on it, the one that's leaning up against the wall right now. Um, you find your stud, which on my trailer is 24 inches in. So from the end of the trailer, 24 inches in is the first metal stud in the wall. Okay, so you have to mount that bar on that stud and determine the height you want and mark the bottom. So I'll show you how I came up with mine and uh, by the way I measured I run Husqvarna um, trimmers and edgers etc and I determined that on mine I needed about uh, oh, 16 to 18 inches and really to give myself adequate space I wanted about 24 inches so that actually works out perfect on this trailer um, and I'd say most of them are probably pretty standard. Those, those metal studs are on two foot centers and so most trailers are probably going to have you know 24 inches before that first stud just right off the bat. Um, but let me show you how I got my height determined. I have my pencil. Here's my first stud and on most trailers you can determine that by the screws that hold the paneling to the stud. So you find those screws and that's where your stud's going to be at. What I did is I lined my bracket up and I went to the top of my panel with the lock. Okay, um, I don't want it up here too close to the ceiling where you don't have room to open and close it, but I want it as high as I can. 
So that's the height I went, even with the top of the panel. And then I took my pencil and I marked underneath the bottom of it. And that's going to give me the height that I need to screw down my first bracket. Okay, and I'm just following the instructions. So uh, the other thing that you need to determine, which again might be very standard, should be very standard. I know the thickness of the wall on my trailer. Okay, um, it has one inch by one inch metal studs, and then it has quarter inch plywood over the top of that. And basically that is, that is all of the distance you have between the inside and the outside of your trailer. So whatever screws you use to mount this up, whether it's the screws that come with it or screws that you provide, you need to make sure that those aren't going to poke through. The top of this plate right here needs to be in line with your mark, okay, because that's where the bracket, um, that's where it's going to sit at. And the bracket needs to be facing up like so. So basically you get it lined up with your mark and then you get it centered up on your stud, which I've got a screw right here. So that's very convenient to tell me where I need to be. And I'm going to use the top and the bottom center hole to mount this up. I might even do all three. I mean, I have plenty of screws, so why not? Make sure those are nice and straight, square, so that everything mounts up properly. After we've mounted the first bracket, the next step is to measure from the center of that bracket over 36 and 3 quarter inches to the left, and the same height from the floor to set our other bottom bracket. Now the instructions say that that second bracket does not need to be in a stud because it's not weight bearing. Um, I'm not sure I like that, but I'm going to see how it works before I decide whether I need to put some kind of a support underneath it or behind it. From the center, I'm just going to come to one of those bolts that I just put. 36 and 3 quarters of an inch. We're going to measure from the floor so that we can come up the same height. And these are going to be 21 and 3 quarters. So that one's going to go into nothing but paneling. So here's the deal. Um, I'm going to stop there. I already have the 1x4s that I need. So I'm going to stop there and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get those 1x4s and cut them to that width plus, you know, plus a few inches probably on each end and uh, far enough to go from stud to stud because I don't personally think that that's strong enough in that paneling. If I had half inch or three quarter inch paneling, I think it would be okay. But this trailer in particular only has quarter inch paneling and I can just about guarantee that uh, with the weight of that bar and the trimmers on it, eventually it's going to tear out of that paneling and then I'm going to have holes and damage to the trailer and all of that. And I'm, I'm in a good position right now to just go ahead and do it right. So, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to edit this out of the video because I think it's important for you guys to see that, uh, you know, there's more than one way to do it. This might work fine for you if your trailer has heavier paneling. 
So uh, mine does not. So like I said, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to add some 1x4s in there. Uh, the 1x4 will be plenty for the strength that I need without being overkill um, as far as burning up space. You know, if I used a 2x4, I'd have 2.5 inches sticking out. Well, inch and a half sticking out farther from the wall. With a 1x4, it's only going to cost me about, uh, well, what, an inch and... Not even an inch, three quarters of an inch. So, anyway, I'll stop there and get that done. Um, got a 1x4 in the lower bracket position and a 1x4 in the upper bracket position. Obviously, I have to paint these, but I just wanted to show you before I painted them so it would make a little more sense. What I did is I used a self tapping screw into the stud into each stud except for the one where it's actually going to mount on the stud which would be that next one. Um, when I screw the brackets on they'll go into the stud and that'll take care of that one. So anyway <clears throat> that was my solution for uh, giving this uh, second bracket a solid place to mount to. Since it is not going into a stud it'll have that 1x4 and the panel behind it together to hold on to so all right we're back where we were except now we have the one by fours in place top and bottom they're all painted to match and I have the two bottom brackets in place um, the one on this side of course is mounted into the stud and then on this side it's just the one by four and the panel behind it which is plenty. I put some nice coarse thread wood screws on this side. They're just a Phillips head. Since the uh, 1x4 is the only thing that's holding it on this side. And then on this side I used the, the self drilling and uh, the three in the middle are in the stud. So they're nice and solid. Um, I put my weight on them. You know I could I could easily stand on that if I wanted to without without it pulling out um, and that's way more weight than it's required to uh, handle because honestly that would probably bend the, the metal 90 degree bracket behind it. So The next step is to set each side in place and mark the top which I've already done that so that I would know where to put the 1x4. So all I have to do is uh, get my top two brackets in place and we'll be ready to set the sides in position and uh, then I believe the next step is preparing the trimmers to go on the rack and then the engine mounts so or engine supports so I'm gonna go ahead and get the top brackets in place the top brackets are in and I wanted to show you guys this real quick so this top bracket <clears throat> Is actually you know the the bracket itself is above the 1x4 this one is actually just below it okay and the reason is because these are standing together um, the locking post is taller okay so make sure that you uh, take that into account when you're mounting this up I, uh, the next thing is to use the Allen wrench and take this part of the uh, top off. Okay, you see that, how it opens up right there. So I need to do that on both sides and then go ahead and uh, get my post set in place and bolt it on. Alright, so they're both in. Uh, apologize for the lighting, but they look sharp. Uh, it's nice and clean low profile. I'll move around to the other side so you can see between the uh, rack and the trailer. There's really not much distance. You can see the color a lot better from this angle, but uh, that's going to look pretty sharp. So everything's in. I, um, I just have it finger tight for now. So my collars up on top, you can tell they're not closed up. They're just, they're just ran down to where I can still tweak it just a little bit if I need to. 
and then on the bottom you just have one bolt that runs through on both sides run it through put a lock nut on it again it's not it's not even tight so I've got there's not very much there but you know eighth of an inch maybe of play and it's like that on both sides so if I need to adjust it just slightly to get the two sides squared up with each other or anything you know, like what I want to do is, is set up a couple trimmers put them in there and then probably tighten everything down with the trimmers in place uh, and that's not in the instructions that's just what I'm what I'm gonna do but uh, anyway so I wanted to show you the distance between the rack and the trailer wall and this was one of the major reasons why I went with this brand because it's very low profile and in a trailer like this um, space is everything I don't have the extra wide trailer in fact here let me uh, grab a tape and I'll show you exactly what I do this is inside the doorway is uh, slightly smaller the doorway is actually six foot okay and then inside the trailer you have six foot seven and a half inches from baseboard to baseboard okay so this isn't the uh, you know the seven foot wide or even the eight foot wide trailer now it has plenty of room for us it has plenty of room for our operation but that might not be enough room for someone else's okay so now I'm gonna go against the paneling on the side of the trailer to the outside of the uh, actual bracket or, or post and it's almost eight and a half inches okay so that's how much space it takes up and that was because I used that three-quarter inch um, you know plywood it would be about seven and a half inches out from the side but but if you're doing this yourself you're probably going to end up doing the same thing I did unless you have the thicker plywood sides um, like I said before if it was half inch or three-quarter inch plywood on the sides I don't think that three-quarter or that one by four would be necessary but I just didn't feel good about it um, just mounted to the paneling because the paneling so thin in this trailer which does make it lighter I mean that's the reason the reason for it is you know the trailer doesn't weigh very much um, so anyway uh, they're in and the next step is mounting the aluminum blocks on the trimmer so let's do that all right mounting the blocks on the trimmer so here's how they go your your main locking block the one that actually locks it into the rack here are your two allen screws you loosen those up and then it goes on like this um, about a quarter of an inch in front of your control okay so basically where the plastic stops on the shaft you go about a quarter of an inch away from that and that's where this will mount okay squared up like that the front has two options uh, well for one you loosen those two screws which opens it up okay and then it's going to go on like this but you can have it facing forward or you can have it facing backwards um, I'm probably going to try it both ways and see which way I like it. I think that way is probably the direction I want to go with it. But it's going to go on just like that. And uh, basically you put it on loose. You tighten up the rear block, put it in the rack. And then once you've put it in the rack, you can slide the, the front one forward and find the proper position for it and then tighten it in place. So uh, I'll show you now that everything's tightened up. So now that, now that these are secured and they're no longer moving, that's... Apparently that's all it was. It was just me. So anyway, uh, that's all good to go. I've got, I think, an edger and two trimmers with me right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get the blocks fixed up for those and mount them up. Uh, I'm just kind of excited to see them in place, honestly. And after that, I've got to do the engine mount still. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those on here and 
then we'll get the engine mounts in place. Okay guys, so if you remember in the beginning, there were four of these little bags of uh, fasteners. Well, those are the bags that you're going to need for your engine supports. Okay, and then you're also going to need two of these for each setup. So you'll have the support piece, two of those, this bracket, and this 90 degree um, solid piece of aluminum square. I believe that's three quarter inch. So uh, because I'm mounting mine the way I am, this bracket is going to be flipped this way. If, uh, if I was mounting on the other side of the trailer, it would be flipped over that way. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that real quick. I don't know if it makes a, a huge amount of difference, but what does make an, a difference is that this has to sit into here. And then also this has the same cutout where it bolts onto the rack. So that's why I had to flip it over that way. It actually looks kind of upside down, but anyway. Um, and then the two other bolts and washers right here are what you use to bolt it onto the rack. So those little bags have all of the fasteners that you need and uh, washers for each bolt to put this all together. So let me get this assembled and show you what it looks like. That literally took me about 30 seconds to assemble. Uh, everything's just finger tight. But now I can put it on underneath one of the uh, trimmer heads, or trimmer engines rather, and uh, get it adjusted properly and be ready to go. Alright guys, so that's in place. Let me show you if I can here. There we go. That's where it bolts on. Okay. So it bolts on on the back of your rack. And then you have your up and down adjustment right here. And then of course your in and out right here. And I just almost was perfect for that spot underneath the trimmer. But I want to show you this. So you push down on this one. I'm probably moving the camera. But that is not moving at all. And it doesn't affect how it comes in and out. I tried it a couple times has no effect on that whatsoever. I just brought it up until it was putting a little bit of pressure on the bottom of it, tightened everything down. Uh, but look at this one. And you can even hear it. But it's got all kinds of bounce. And I notice in the middle of the shaft, I don't know if you can see that, but when the head comes down, the middle of the shaft actually bows up a little bit. And so with this, of course, there's no bowing, no movement. And uh, I can definitely see where over time, of course, it's not going to happen right away. But over time, that lack of support would uh, or could cause things to start coming loose and prematurely breaking down. So um, anyway, that's one engine mount in place. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put together the other four and... Uh, get those three in place. They should be pretty much interchangeable between these two trimmers. Uh, this trimmer has that metal plate on the bottom so that might change how it uh, how it sets. So you know I may have to have a designated spot for each unit. Um, you know whatever spot you take it out of that's the spot you put it back in so that they fit properly. But we'll see we'll see how that all turns out. So Anyway, let's get these others put together. Okay guys, everything is together and finished except for the last trimmer that I have to fix up. I uh, wanted to point out, this is important to me, these are the uh, parts that are left over which, you know, these will be used up on the, on the trimmer. Um, and that's the additional hardware that you would need if you were going to mount this on a uh, open trailer. So, the thing I wanted to point out is that everything was here. Every fastener, every part, every piece was in the box. Um, if you've ever gone to put together a project and had to go to the hardware store to get one bolt or whatever it might be that wasn't in the package, you know how infuriating that is. 
So I was very happy to get to the end of the project and find that everything was there, everything was included, and I didn't have to make any trips to the hardware store, and the only modification I made was to the trailer itself, not to the rack. I didn't have to re-drill any holes. I didn't have to re-tap any of the threads. Everything was as it needed to be, as it should be, for the installation. So uh, I'm very excited about having this in my trailer. I'm very excited about uh, putting it to use and uh, getting my money's worth out of it. And I would definitely recommend it if anyone's in the market for trimmer racks. Definitely look into this uh, Green Touch trimmer rack. This is the four position. This is the XC104. And uh, it's pretty nice, guys. So uh, check that out. I hope this video was helpful. If you're going to be putting one of these together and installing it, um, again, I apologize for the lighting not being the greatest, but you got to work with what you have. So, hi guys, just wanted to get one last shot of the uh, Green Touch trimmer rack, the four position. I've got all four trimmers on there now, the two edgers and uh, the two trimmers. So the top, very top trimmer and edger are the two that I generally use and the two lower are the ones that uh, Gage usually uses. It's all in position and everything fits nice, comes in and out of there nice. The uh, edgers are a little tricky because when you pull them off you kind of have to pull the uh, guide wheel behind the rack and then go forward with it to uh, take it off but other than that it's it's not a big deal it only takes an extra second so just a little different because of that curved shaft if they were uh, straight shaft edgers then that probably wouldn't even be a thing but anyway uh, there it is guys all done all ready to roll so thanks for watching